going to do something that I call talking clogging. It's a demonstration of clogging. So uh, if you can't see very well, feel free to move around a little bit. But uh, Let's move that chair if you don't mind. Elwood and I and Kathy, we're not big note readers. We've learned almost all the stuff we play by ear. And the same goes with the dancing. I learned how to dance just by watching people, copying them, and then spending hours practicing. This is our old kitchen counter that I'm practicing on right now. <laughs> the first time I ever saw this dance form was in 1992 in Eastern Kentucky when I went down there on purpose to go to a week-long camp because I wanted to meet Gene Ritchie. Unbeknownst to me, I was going to see clogging for the first time, also known as flat footing. And unlike tap dance or Irish step dance, I am often just dancing on a very flat foot, sliding around a lot. This step that I'm doing right now comes from West Africa. It's a slave step. People call it the chug. You call it chugging something else. Oh yeah? <laughs> this step is called the Indian. And it comes straight out of Cherokee ceremonial dance. There's different ways I've seen it danced. Sometimes people are real small, low to the ground, understated. Sometimes people are real flamboyant about it. And one time in Kentucky, I remember meeting this guy, over six feet tall, big guy in overalls, and he hooked his foot around like that. I thought that was kind of interesting. That first year, I learned how to flat foot. I was at that camp for a week, and I learned this step. This is the basic. And it is called the two-sounded walking step, also known as the buck step. I'm making two sounds with each foot. Can you move that chair? It's still making a sound. Just move it over there. And over time, I got interested in making more and more sounds. The leather-soled shoes were the first shoes I used for many years. But now I wear tap shoes. So this is the two-sounded walking step. And eventually, I learned to make more sounds in between. This is three sounds. The four-sounded walking step is also called the Tennessee walking step, and that's the basis of all that I do as a freestyle clogger. Four sounds with each foot. Isn't that neat? And then over time, I thought, ooh, if I subtract part of the step and add something in, I can get all kinds of interesting sounds and start to tell stories. You take the straight Tennessee walking step and you take out the right toe. Take out the left heel. Right toe, left heel. Easy for me to say, right? So this dancing is a little bit Scottish, Irish, and English. But as you can see, it's much different than the Irish step dance. It's older than tap dance. Tap dance is much more showy, a bent upper body, expressive with the upper arms. Clogging on the timeline is after Irish, before tap. And clogging is a little bit Irish, Scottish, English, German, French, Native American, and African. In many respects, it's the perfect American art form. And traveling all over the United States, meeting Canadian dancers too. I just picked up steps here and there. There's a guy named Charlie that I met 
in Western Pennsylvania. He taught me the gallop once. He's about 70 years old. It's the first time I ever saw somebody dancing on a piece of wood on the grass at a folk festival. Some kid I met years later who now appears on television, His name is Caleb Cobb, 13 years old. He said, if you take that step and add to it, you can get this. So I have these conversations with dancers I meet at festivals. One time I was learning to, to do the shuffle, and I did this. I thought, oh, that's kind of nice. I'll uh, have that extra sound in there. I love to see how many sounds you can make. There are also some showy steps that we teach kids sometimes at school. Like one time we were in the Ozark Mountains of Arkansas, and I saw this guy dancing on the big stage at the Ozark Folk Center. They call it jig dancing there. It's very vigorous. And this guy was 11 feet tall. <laughs> and he weighed 40 pounds. And that's the first time I ever saw the wheel. <laughs> Woo! Gotta do both sides. So I can proudly say I am the only freestyle clogger who teaches and performs in the state of Rhode Island. <laughs> I think all three of us have some rather distinctive titles like that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's not that impressive sounding really. And um, there's what? There's a million people, right? It makes me one in a million, so. So on our farm in Foster, for about three years of practicing, I, I would walk across the road and practice in our old barn. Unheated, you know, this time of year it'd be like three degrees out and believe me, you'd get plenty warm after a little while. And, one time I was practicing, it was probably February. Doors are closed to the barn, I'm in my own little world, not a lot of cars go by, I'm seeing how fast I can go. And I stop, and outside behind the door I hear this out on the road. <laughs> You're getting better! <laughs> and it was this guy that I still run into, his name is Ed, he's so funny. He rides his bike in this 10 mile loop every day, no matter what the weather. He'd been monitoring my progress for months. <laughs> Another set of neighbors moved in a few years ago and we ran into them on the road and they said, I thought you were building an addition. <laughs> but after a while I realized it was all too organized sounding. And then one other guy, and these are all true stories, he was jogging by the house one day as I was leaving the barn after I was practicing. And I said, hi, he said, hi, I didn't really know him. And he stopped and he said, were you exercising horses in there? <laughs> and that's it, everybody. So just do it. Okay, one, four.